after he hired me, God really used him to show me that he was in the talent distribution business because this man, I've had one talent because that man walked by my desk one day and said, you sure talk a lot. He said, have you ever considered sales and marketing? And it changed my life. I ended up with a degree in marketing and figured if I could sell for him, I could sell for myself. And I went into my own business. And when that business was destroyed in the 1992 Los Angeles riots, I was not going back to welfare because I could remember depositing more money in a week than the welfare had sent me in a year. So we don't have to finish their lives for them. What we have to do is be there right now and understand that God needs to answer this big moral question on the table. And we need to be able to do everything that we can right now while we are moving toward that answering. We know he will. There are too many stories. Abortion has deeply scarred us as a society. It hurts babies. I don't have time to tell you how deeply it hurts babies, and we know it does. You know, as if we needed ultrasound to see that there is life there. Anyone that ever was pregnant and put some anchovies in their pizza at two months, they know that, that, that baby, they're not going to sleep that night, okay? We know it's alive. But now we have witness because when the ban on partial birth abortion, the judge up in New York asked the doctor, does the baby feel the pain? On the witness stand. It deeply has scarred us. It, got, it scars our children. There are too many now that know that somebody is missing in their life. And in fact, that was the testimony that passed up in Alaska. He was so nervous. He got up. It was the first time he ever said it in front of his friends. And it was mostly because they're um, trying to get a parental notification through the ballot initiative because they had one in their law and a judge threw it out. And now they have it in the legislature. And one woman is holding it up in her committee. The only African-American elected official in Alaska is holding up on her committee. Well, I didn't know that. I knew that one person was holding it up, but I didn't know it was a black. And I also didn't know that she was sitting in the audience that day when I was talking and I was at her church. So when she finished abrading me and and then ran out of the room screaming and hollering, the pastor got up and said, I'm going to defend that woman, me. Because everybody went silent, which is all the time that happens. Nobody wants to speak up when one threatens, especially if they have a title behind their name or they're in the legislature. They make all the other blacks live by the code of silence. And he got up and said, no, because all of you know my grandson. But what you don't know is that my grandson, every time I look at him, I remember that somebody's missing because he was a twin. He said, it's exactly what Ms. Parker said. They gave her my daughter something. And it, it killed her the other baby. And then when she was sick, I took her to the hospital, and we didn't know what was wrong with her. And that's when I found out. He didn't even know. He's a pastor of a church. And then the doctor told her, well, oh, she, she had twins, so we can get rid of the other one, too. And he's like, you got to be kidding. We're not going to get rid of the other one, too. And now the grandson is growing up. This is a secret sin in too many people's lives, and they just can't get a handle on what has happened in their lives. I know people all over this country now, women in particular, that are now saying to me, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. But with that one, I'm going to say I'm sorry one more time on my deathbed. We've got to do something to help our society recover from what's going on right now. You've got to protect your state. In legislation, you've got to make sure that you do absolutely everything you can. Because when God answers this big moral question, which he will, you cannot have hundreds of people praying. I'm, well, actually, you've got millions the, the Catholics, the Lutherans, the Episcopals, they're all in their liturgy. They say, don't let the needy, O Lord, be forgotten or their hope taken away. It's a scripture out of Psalm 9, 18. And so that means that for hundreds of years, millions of people have been saying this if they're speaking on behalf of the people. Don't let the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Don't let their hope be taken away. It's found right in the middle of that, script, that body of scripture, and it's not a prayer. It's a statement. It says the needy won't be forgotten and their hope won't be taken away. And then in my Bible, right across from that is Psalm 12. And right in the middle of Psalm 12, it says for the, for the oppression of the poor and for the sighing of the needy. And it's such a word of agony, sighing of the needy. These people need us. The, 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 the girls, this has deeply scarred our women, not just women individually, but women in general. Because there's only two places outside of nature where God put time. He put time in the week for worship, and he put time in the woman to stabilize society. And we have destabilized society to the point that every social ill in our, that, we're, that we're dealing with today is directly tied to family collapse. It hurts our men. I, I can't even tell you how deeply, not just individually, but it is hurting our men in general because they postponed in marriage in record numbers. And Gilda did an excellent job to talk about what happens when women manipulate that biological clock and men lose track of time, how they become very unproductive and oftentimes 
promiscuous, and promiscuous men are extremely dangerous men. If you don't believe it, you can go and look in the inner cities and see what happens once family life collapses and we lose track of time. This is, this is a terrible, terrible crime against humanity that God is going to answer. So when he says that for the sign of the needy, he's very serious. And the scripture goes on to say, so now I'm going to stand up, says the Lord. It's written there. And he said, and I'm going to set them in the safety that they yearn for. People are yearning and crying. That young man, when he had to tell me that he went to his wife, after he had committed two abortions, he didn't think about it. Years later, he thought about it. You know when he thought about it? Was after he got saved and got married and now they're pregnant. And he, and he couldn't sleep at night. The enemy came in daily and told him that that little kid that's growing in your wife's womb is going to die because of what you did. Over and over and over, he was horrified. We cannot continue to leave people like this and neither will the Lord. So we will answer this question in one day. And when he answers that question, as one of my friends reminded me, he said, every time God answers a big moral question on the table, then he turns the history clock on. He's going to turn the history clock on this one the same way he answered the question of slavery and turned the history clock on. And once he answered it, now we look back at those pictures and said, what happened? How could such a free society that came up with such a brilliant concept in the foundations end up leaving this on the table for so long? to where God had to stand up 80 years and 600,000 dead later. We won't have that problem this time. Someone asked me, you really think we're going to go into a cultural war like that, the way that, you know, especially after Jim the sign man got gunned down a few weeks ago? I said, no, because we have our 5,000 Harriet Tubmans out there, our 5,000 crisis pregnancy centers out there, pulling them out one by one. No, we have our right to lifers out there who are making sure that they're the Frederick Douglass saying, how do we manipulate the laws? How? We have too many legislators inside that are doing what they can to keep peace and safety for, for, for those that are considering, like what we heard just now. The young woman, we have too many of young people that are saying, I'm a survivor. So I don't believe that we're going to do that, but I do believe that when he answers that question, we're going to see record. The same way we saw record after the Holocaust. For those of you that haven't been in New York lately, you know, when the, tire, when the towers came down, I guess they didn't have anything to do with the debris, so they extended Manhattan. Manhattan's a little bit bigger, and, uh, and there's a Holocaust museum on it now. And it is, it's kind of eerie, thinking what's under it. But it's, it's record of what happened. And now we look at that record and say, what took us so long? Why in the world did we wait? We knew what was happening. How did we allow our brethren in the churches there just turn the music up louder and sing? And he's going to turn the history clock on this one. The minute that question is answered, he's going to turn the history clock on, and we already have picture. We know what's happening in the womb. And our grandchildren, Mr. James, my little Mr. James, he's going to look at those pictures. Your little Mr. James is going to look at those pictures. You know, someone asked me, how come you're in this? I'm in this because of Mr. James, because God has so enriched my life that not only after four abortions was I able to birth. I know too many women who want abortion, and they've never been able to birth. And they live a life of mourning. Not only was I able to birth one, I birthed two. And one I got to keep for 14 years. The other one I married off and she gave me Mr. James. I had to marry that girl off. She was too high maintenance. I brought her up in Southern California. I was like, oh no, we spoil our kids out here. I got to find her a husband. And I did. Married somebody from St. Louis. So, yeah. Mr. James, like your Mr. James is going to look at those history books because I don't believe it's going to take the Lord that long. It's too dark. And he's going to say, what happened, grandmommy? This, you, you, you are alive. I'm looking at this in my history book. And this is during the time that you were here and vibrant. What did you do? And I want to do what you want to be able to do. I want to be able to look at Mr. James in his eye and said, I did absolutely everything I could to stop it. God bless you.